Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. It's getting late. My day was bogged down today, but I'm here. So this video is how we can overcome the food inflation. And I think that's one of our most important challenges. And I think I'm up to the challenge. So the first thing I did was I'm on a diet, but not strict bacon. So this is bacon grease and I want to make some bacon gravy. So just bacon grease and flour. And so um, I was thinking about the diet. And so, you know, I didn't get fat eating like one bagel or, you know, a couple cookies, quite the contrary. So I decided, why don't you think about the diet is like pressing the undo. You just go back the other direction, quit eating so much carbs, quit, eat, you know, one small package of chips didn't get me fat. And, uh, you know, just stop being unreasonable and glutton. And eventually, you know, and that's the best way, you know, a lot of us, if any of you have gained weight, you probably gained it slowly. You didn't just like gain 20 pounds. Although I have seen some people recently that seem to have gained a lot of weight uh, in a very short period of time. I hope this is good. I'm gonna drink out of it. I'll tell you in a minute. This stuff lasts forever. I don't know if it's because it's not real milk, but I can make cheese out of this stuff. So I will make myself, I want to brown my uh, bacon, see my drippings, I want to brown them a little bit more. So uh, the challenge is how to, how to beat inflation on food. So I think I know one way, if you buy your food that's expensive marked down, like your meat, like your cheese, um, like your dairy, like cheese, half price. And then if you find the places where you get the uh, marked down food, um, you're, you're gonna be able to save a large percentage on your food, even uh, probably 50%. Today I bought marked down food. I will show you in a minute. I'm not at a stopping point. <laughs> So the main thing that I did that made me gain weight was uh, sugar. So I'm just uh, stopping eating the sugar and I'm trying to find uh, snacks that are not full, so full of sugar. Uh, for many years, I didn't eat any sugar when I was young. Uh, and that was, a lot of that is because, uh, you know, of my job as a hairstylist uh it's hard to find a job i mean you don't have to be a raving beauty but it's best if you're not i mean there's successful very fat hairdressers but uh you know if you want to uh, walk into a salon and uh you want to uh, get hired it's best if if you're a little bit attractive and especially if you get older then it's very important and so, you know, I retired and I was happy to retire. Uh, I, I swear I didn't even comb my hair for two years. It really kind of felt good. But then, you know, I basically couldn't stand myself. <laughs> Looking really horrible does not make it better. Uh, I like being retired. Um, the comments were good. Somebody asked me, uh, why do you stay in your car? Why don't you just stay in your nice house? Well, there is a reason for that, and that was a good comment. The reason is, is because I used to work three jobs. Sometimes I worked from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, there, were, one time I worked in a basement, and it was the Sears basement, and I went in, and it was light, and I came out, and it was dark. So uh, my job. You know, if you've ever been in a job like that, it's really kind of like uh, incarceration. I, I can really kind of feel for the people who have ever been incarcerated. 
I mean, at any time I could refuse to do it, which probably wouldn't be smart. So I made a little uh, peppermint tea. So my uh, bacon will bacon gravy. So, okay, so now I want to talk to you guys about, okay. I want to talk to you guys about hunger, poverty, and destitution. So uh, I think it's part, uh, okay, everybody knows hungry would be you wouldn't have enough food. I mean, these kind of things should be firmly in our minds, and I'll tell you why, because we're seeing it every day, and it's not connecting, I think. So, and, uh, you know, when I worked in areas and even in shops, um, I used to think to myself, what the F is wrong with these people? You know, I was in these low-end shops, and now I realized uh, things are pretty bad for them. And it was really hard for me to really figure out what the problem was because we work side by side. But as you may have noticed, I'm extremely cheap and it's uncommon for me to really uh, spend large sums of money, like at the casino. Okay, poverty. The state of one who lacks a usual or socially acceptable amount of money or material possessions. You know, I noticed this in the shops. Uh, the I said, well, why uh, don't you go to the swap meet? Well, there's no possessions to sell. There's a lack of possessions. So, you know, I'm always buying, buying, buying. And so that, um, you know, when I do have money, also I don't lease a vehicle. My vehicle is paid for. But if you have to have a vehicle, you know, that's another thing. Um, and no money to meet basic needs of food. So that's why, you know, we want to stockpile. Um, I mentioned to you guys, I worked in this shop one time and the kids got food poisoning from eating food that had been in the refrigerator too long. And so like I thought, well, why didn't you put the food in the freezer? Uh, one of the, the uh, followers made a good comment. This was early on, and I'll never forget that. And he said, once we started freezing, every little last bit of leftovers, we didn't run out of food anymore. So that was a really good comment. Clothing. I've been showing you guys my, um, my clothes that I bought at the thrift store. And so, you know, now I can kind of stop uh, because uh, I have enough food for uh, two years. So yesterday, I went to a 99 cent store and I bought food that was half price. And I got home and I realized that I didn't pay half price. So that really uh, motivated me to shop at the other 99 cent store. <laughs> And also, you know, I was having good luck at the one uh, thrift store buying clothes, you know. And I thought at the time, I think I'll keep going back because that is not the usual uh, case in these places. So if you are going to try to buy uh, clothes in a thrift store, you, can, you have to stop by continuously. Now, the best thing would be, I've learned this, is if you stop by after work, because that's when they put the stuff out for the next day. So in the 99 cent store by the thrift store I went to, the stuff was totally garbage again. So I went to a different uh, 99 cent store and all my purchases were the correct price and I got a lot of stuff half price. So that is poverty. Okay, now destitution. No money or possessions children in the streets. Now we're seeing this stuff in the U.S. We're seeing young adults barely older than children living in the streets. Penniless, poor, impoverished, and distressed. So that is something that, that I mean, oh, this is not totally uncommon in the U.S. now, and it should be. It really should be. So if we save our bacon grease, now I bought the bacon marked down. So what I do is I go to places that I know that I can get marked down food and I buy the food marked down, like the bacon. The birds are happy. <laughs> so okay, here's my little plate that I bought and this was hard as hell to find too. So I'll just put my uh, bacon on here. 
so yesterday I bought uh, English muffins, uh, half price. So now they were still a good deal, even at full price. So I didn't get fat eating one English muffin. So I have one English muffin with some butter. And uh, I will have some gravy in a minute. And I have one boiled egg. So uh, life is good. Uh, also, I'm able to buy butter marked down. I bought this for uh, $2.99, that's pretty cheap. And then today I bought at 99 cent only, I bought apples, three of them, for uh, 25 cents a pound. And they're really nice apples, but this one needs to be eaten. I don't know how much, how many pounds this was. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have half an apple because I'm not big on fruit. But uh, one of the things, did I put the rats? Did I put the potato peeler back? I really, really don't like to eat apple peels. So I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, one of my knives is pretty nice and sharp. Um, if you remember this week, I bought a beef, a $36 beef for $18. Okay, my bacon, or my gravy is looking good. Here it is. So, you know, this is cheap when you, uh, you get the, for the stockpile, I would try to get the gravy, um, I would try to get the gravy uh, at uh, whole, whole milk, not 2%, and cow's milk while we can. Uh, I can't always find it. So uh, what I do, here it is, is um, I just put a little bit on my um, muffin and then I um, just leave the rest in the bowl and I eat it like a little bowl full of gravy. So uh, one of the ways to uh, fight food infl inflation is to stockpile the food that's likely to increase in price like um, milk and cheese and butter. So I'll put my, uh, to, I'll put my, um, so this is a good apple. You know, only one of them had a brown spot. The other three, two are fine. So, uh, you know, you're going to, you can make applesauce and you can make the applesauce bread. But my idea for this was mainly to have some, a little bit fine food that I like. And uh, one of the things I like very much is, is cheese. And I didn't really get fat eating cheese either. But uh, I could, <laughs> what a way to go, right? So I will have a little cheese to go with my, um, supposed to wipe your blades off as soon as you use them. So I will just cut some little, uh, this is cheddar cheese that I bought one time uh, when it was on sale. So the closer you can get the uh, food 50% uh, off, the easier it's going to be to uh, beat inflation. So here we have it. We have bacon that I bought marked down. We have English muffins that I bought marked down. We had um, eggs that I didn't buy marked down. <laughs> we have apples that I did mark down. And we have cheese that I bought marked down. Okay, so that is a big trick. Not the only trick, however, and full of more tricks. Nice tricks that anybody can do. And the sooner you start doing these, the more food you're gonna have and the better quality food you're gonna have. And so the trick to losing uh, weight, 
So what I like to do, what I like to do is, I like to uh, cut my um, bread, and I'm just gonna have one piece. And then today I was up there walking. That also helps. So what I like to do is I like to dip my bread in the gravy and I like to eat it. I don't have any salt and pepper in this gravy yet, but it did have a lot of pepper on the bacon. Yum. They're predicting not so much in the developed countries, but I think that's um, I think that's incorrect. I think we are going to see hunger, poverty, and uh, destitution. Uh, when I worked in these areas that weren't too hot, the ladies told me that they lost their jobs and their kids were going hungry. And I thought, wow, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why wouldn't you go get um, welfare? Why wouldn't you go get WIC? Why wouldn't you go to the pantries? I think the answer to that is you just might not think about, you might not know what to do. You might never have been poor and... Okay, so now I want to talk about stockpiling. Okay. The three major foods are wheat, corn, and rice. And I wanted to mention rice. Okay, some of the rice to me tastes awful, but this Walmart rice is, I think it's less than a dollar still. I think this stuff's pretty good. I eat this all the time. And then wheat, we need wheat for biscuits, bread, pasta, and noodles. And I want to give you two important recipes. The first one is skillet biscuits. Here they are. I mean, not everybody wants to cook in the oven. It takes a little practice to get good at the biscuits. So what I do is um, I mix the milk and the butter together. And then I add the salt and the baking powder. And I don't just add the the, um, the the flour. I add the flour little by little and I carefully uh, stir the liquid until I form a ball, a ball you know, like a, a biscuit dough. And then if you want to cook it on top of the stove, you can Put it like biscuits and then just make a foil tent and put your uh, heat on um, or a camp stove on a low and it will bake right up just like a biscuit. And then I want to give you my pasta. So, you know, uh, what, what happens if we go to the store and of course I lost the pasta. We go to the store and uh, there's no... Uh, there's no uh, noodles. Well, lucky you met me. And they're hard to roll out, but you can roll them out very easily. Mix everything and knead it together. It's going to be a stiff dough, and then roll it out and cut it in strips. You can cut them in big strips and make them like dumplings. Here they are. I've made them a lot on my station, on my, uh, my station, my channel. So, uh, I am keeping most of my expensive flour and corn flour in the refrigerator. And what I'll be doing is I'll be clearing my refrigerator. I mean, if something happens and I've got ketchup, mustard, and this kind of stuff, that's no joke. I would rather have big bags of flour. I don't want anything happening. Okay, um, so uh, flour. And the other thing is, did I leave them out yet? Yeah, crackers are getting expensive. So when I find crackers for a dollar a box, I buy a couple. I can't always do that. Okay, corn is the third most important uh, food. These three foods comprise 51% of all the food eaten in the uh, world. And it's no joke if the corn should run low because 
Uh, it is used for animals, animal feed, and ethanol for gas. Uh, tortillas, cornbread, and corn mush, which corn mush is actually pretty good when you get the hang of making it. Uh, you can fry it and various things like that. So, um, and then rice. Okay, now the corn is no joke because the corn, as well as the wheat, a lot of it is bought from um, the Ukraine and Russia. And Russia provides 20% of the wheat and, and Ukraine 8%. And they provide these commodities to China and the EU. So you go, oh, the EU. The EU is bigger than America. It's always in people, it comprises more people. It's always the US, the US, but the EU is Austria, Belgium, uh, Bulgaria, um, Republic of Cyprus, Republic of Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany. You get the idea Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, uh, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, Spain. Spain and Sweden. So what's going to happen is these countries with more money are going to go and they're going to get the grain they need. They're going to buy the grain they need and that leaves the countries that don't have that much money like uh, who's going to be short and these countries are the bread eaters. Africa, Turkey, Egypt and Arab and the Arab nations. Okay, they say if Egypt falls, get ready. That's that's it. That's it. We're, and the EU comprises 447.7 million people. The U.S. has 350 million. So, and then this issue of the animal food is no joke either. And then uh, Russia controls a lot of the fertilizer chemicals. Okay, so I mentioned to you guys I bought English muffins and I took out to show you. Okay, with the English muffins, I can make some tasty pizzas. I can put some uh, pizza sauce, this is why I bought them, and some uh, mozzarella cheese and make some little pizzas. I'm going to try to start doing that instead of... Um, buying pizzas. I'm going to be learning to make my own because it is really ridiculous when you can buy a bag of, of English muffins and make some pretty good pizzas anytime you want. Okay, I want to mention, so now we're just going to go into cheap food. All right, this is a good cheap thing to stockpile and this is how you can save money and you're not going hungry. Pork and beans on, on toast or English muffins with cold fruit. That is good. And if you have some uh, Vienna sausages, that would be good. And you can fry um, eggs. Eggs are getting expensive with Vienna sausages and English muffins. Also, I mentioned soup. And if you have this, you have vegetables and bread. Uh, I know like when I was working in the shops with the, uh, uh, the uh, Mideasterns, they eat a lot of food that has like, sort of like tomato type gravy and they're dipping the bread in that. And they also eat hummus on bread. Okay, and then here's another example. I bought these three cans of tuna marked down one day. They were there, I grabbed them. I bought um, these uh, today, these um, bell peppers. 25 cents a pound. I bought these two boxes. I mean, these were open, but all the packages are there. And these are good with, if you have in your stockpile, banana chips. Don't knock it until you try it with milk. I usually eat uh, cereal in the middle of the night. And I bought, okay, I finally broke down, you know, on the keto. And I found these pork rinds. Okay, these are hot and spicy. And so I resisted the pork rind thing because I thought, that sounds horrible. This is really good with tea. A lot of times when you want to eat, you just want to crunch. And these do the trick. And then I bought um, 
this. I bought two of them because now some of the packages are 15 feet and I bought two packages because I use a lot of ba baggies. And uh, let's see. Another cheap food is this. This is good. You can eat some English muffins with some garlic and butter or a little pizza. Or you can eat that right out of the can. Okay, I was doing markdown shopping, and so I bought this this lovely necklace. I'm really glad I bought this. I lurked around, and these were eighteen dollars. And these are silver plated uh, necklaces, and I got these for four dollars and fifty cents. And then I got this one for four dollars and fifty cents. And what I was looking for is. I was looking for a chain for, one time I bought this for myself. This is cute, but I, I don't know what I did with the chain. It's around here everywhere. I mentioned to you guys that I'm watching, um, I'm watching uh, Married at First Sight, and so far it's not going well for the couples. Before that, I, am, I bought, first of all, I mentioned the wedding rings, but the movies I watched on Netflix before were imposters, and I just happened to have a ring that was rather uh, similar to the one. Now this ring is is totally valueless because the stone is somehow the stone is loose and it's a bit tarnished. So it's one of those things, you know. So okay, so I've got tea and pork rinds cheese and fruit jello i still have my jello and olives so with the english muffins i could have lunch meat and cheese like turkey and ham pork and beans or baked beans with the canned fruit and pizza okay now it's been reported that we might have a possible sausage shortage so i showed you luckily i stocked up on sausages probably due to the pork thing uh, also now the trout have picked up a trout virus. So now let's just go to cheap food. That's gonna help. If you eat an assortment of food, some not so cheap like the roast beef I bought, some not so cheap like the bacon, some cheap like the SpaghettiOs or the soup or, you know, you can get by like that. So bacon with gravy or BLT, bologna, with like, um, I, I cut it in strips and I fry it and then I have fried eggs and toast or a burrito. Hot dogs, and I love this. Rice with milk and sugar. The rice, a bowl of rice with some milk and sugar and hot dogs with ketchup. Sounds horrible, but it's actually pretty good. Uh, hot dogs and chili. Um, chili and tortilla chips and hot dog taquitos. You just roll your hot dogs in the corn tortillas and fry them. So that's another cheap meal. So it's a combination to beat the inflation of buying food drastically marked down. Oh, and thanks for the comments that you guys told me you did that. That was very encouraging. Uh, when I first started um, YouTube, I used to pray to God and I used to say, if one person tries this stuff, I'll be happy. So, and also uh, people told me they found my videos uh, from the um, feed. So that was awesome. So um, Ellen's Abundant Life, a couple of you came from Ellen. I keep recommending Ellen because I love the channel myself. So hi to all of Ellen's Abundant Life, our last followers. And then some people told me they were searching money saving, stockpiling, stuff like that. And so there's uh, good comments also on the followers that did the markdown shopping. So read the comments and then get a notebook and write the stuff in your notebook. So a combination, I think one of the best things, like say if you want necklaces, get what you want but wait until it goes on sale so now i have bought all this clothes at the thrift store so now i can be a little bit choosier um i've had good luck buying jeans at walmart for five dollars each why would i buy jeans at a thrift store that's the way i've always done it my entire life 
And so now I'm looking for t-shirts at Walmart. So you guys, those are enough tips for one day. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all.